Hi, I'm Dr. Dan Butterman, and this is part two of the Zento video series. In part one, we talked about the data collection necessary for an Zento case. And in this video, we'll go through all the, set, all the steps necessary to actually submit the case and then evaluate the plan and finally to approve it. So you'll log into orderdigitalsolutions.com. And once here, you'll be able to click on the Azento workflow and click order now. Once you click order now, the prescription is going to show up. And there's only a couple things you need to do to fill out the prescription. First, we're just going to choose the name for the case. Could be anything you like. We're going to choose if we're going to be placing the implant on the mandible or the maxilla. We're going to select the position for our implant. And if we were going to be doing an extraction and an immediate implant placement, we would click on that. Then we have a choice between two procedure solutions. If we want just a custom healing procedure, we would select that. Otherwise, we would choose an immediate temporization procedure. We choose the color of our abutment, whether it's gold shaded titanium or titanium. We choose either a cement retained temporary or a screw retained temporary crown. And then finally, we choose the shade that we would like our temporary crown to be. And then we have a choice between either an Astra UV implant or we can use the Zive system. Once we click Next, we're going to have the option to upload the data that we, uh, select, we achieve from our patient. If you do an upload of an STL file, which is possible, you can save that to your computer, click on the STL file, and start to upload it. If you've sent your optical scan through Seric Connect, though, you'll just choose select Choose Scan. You'll find your patient and click Attach. Once you hit attach, it will automatically upload it. Same thing for the CT scan. We'll choose browse. We'll find where we saved our DICOM file. And remember, we could either do the DICOM RM zip or the CT1 zip. And if we've converted it and zipped the CT1, just the upload speed will be somewhat faster. If we have a DICOM RM zip, it'll just take a little bit longer for that to upload. From here, you'll see all of the components that you've planned to order. You'll see where it's going to be sent to, and then you simply need to accept the limitation of liability and click on place order. Once you've done that, you will see an order number that's been generated, and that's the order number that can be used to uh, track anything about the case, including shipping. So about a day later, you're going to receive a plan, and as soon as you open the plan for the first time with the EV system, it's going to warn you that the uh, drilling will be approximately a millimeter longer than where the final position, apical position of the implant is going to be. So you need to make sure you understand that. And that's important to keep in mind if you're altering the position of your implant. It's going to open a viewer and with this viewer you've got three presets on the bottom. It's going to default to the aesthetic preset which is going to show your opposing model, your arch, and all the restorative components. You have the ability to switch any of those components off and on. You can adjust the translucency of each of the models, um, which is important for being able to see through the um, position for the margin. So we want to start by taking a look at the restoration. And we want to really evaluate everything about that restoration, starting with the implant position and make sure we like our healing abutment. Um, keep in mind, if you are going to be placing a temporary on top of that healing abutment, that, uh, that needs to come into play here. We want to look at our final abutment design. We want to see how far subgingival it is, all the contours, make sure we like all of that. We want to see that the um, crown that's been designed is appropriate for this case, that the contours are acceptable. And again, being able to adjust the translucency off and on is helpful because we can see the um, margins. Then we're going to evaluate the implant itself once we've, we like the restorative components. We'll be able to look at the implant preset, and here we're going to see an indication of vital structures such as the teeth marked in orange and any nerves that are present marked as well. Um, we want to make sure that the alignment angulation where the implant sits in bone is appropriate and that you're happy with the entire plan. Again, we have the option to look at the restorative components and place those on and sort of get a feel how far subosseous or how far subgingival these components are going to ultimately end up being. From here, we'll be able to look at the guide and we can see where the indexing features are on that guide. 
and that's going to be critical during surgery that we have access to be able to see those components so that we can line the case up during surgery. We're also going to be able to scroll through the implant and bone and make sure that in all positions of that implant, in all slices of the CT, that our uh, implant is positioned appropriately. A couple other features on the uh, 2D window, we can click on a ruler setting and that'll allow us to take any measurements that we like, um, maybe the platform of the implant up to the restorative margin, maybe the uh, implant to the adjacent CEJ, we'll be able to basically take a, uh, a very quick measurement and have access to that. And then finally, we can take a look at a panoramic view as well, just so that we can see that in relation to, to the whole picture. So once you've finally evaluated your plan, you have a couple choices. You can either approve your plan or you can make changes to the plan. And if you decide that you want to approve it and you like everything about it, as soon as you click on approve, it will make you a um, uh, basically click on approving the treatment plan once again, and that will start the actual process of fabrication. So keep in mind, once you do click on approval for the treatment plan, the, uh, the manufacturer is going to start happening immediately for this case. If you decide you want to make a change, though, you're going to have either a comment box that's going to open up, and you'll be able to write specifically any changes you want. And it might be the position of the implant that you'd like moved, might be a different size implant, or it could be anything about the restoration as well. If we want to change the contour, margins of the abutment, or, or anything about the restorative components, we can just write in the comment box to change. If we want to make a change ourselves, we have that option. So if you click on the fact that you would like to move the implant on your own, it's going to actually open the Simplant Editor software. So that will need to be installed before it can do that. Once the editor software opens, it's quite intuitive to be able to move the implant in any position and space that you like. Um, and you do have to keep in mind, again, with an EV, that you will drill about a millimeter longer than the final apical position of the implant but it's very easy to just move the implant position around. You can even select a different size of implant, um, a different diameter of implant. And once you make those changes, understand that it'll be about 24 hours later before you get a new restorative plan. The restoration and the guide will need to be redesigned and replanned based on the new implant position. Thank you very much.